Hello, welcome to Luna Midnight Designs. It's time for the people's choice, and you will have chosen Modern Rococo, which I kind of figured what it's gonna win because last time it was like the second most popular. Uh, maybe next time, Strawberry Cow. The people have spoken, so let's get started. I have all of these pastel and floral fabrics that fit perfectly with the Rococo aesthetic. I also have this ribbon tie fabric that I just really love and really, really want to use. It's so shiny and fits perfectly with the rest of the fabrics. And of course, I have tons and tons of lace and ribbon to add. To make the patterns for the clothes, I used what I had and just scaled it up. So I cut out the pattern pieces first from the paper and then from the fabric. I'll be starting with the blouse. So to match the Rococo fashion, I make the clothes kind of like patchwork-like. Some of the dresses from that time period have like multiple patterns and different laces and ribbon types. So I'm just doing my best to recreate that. So for the blouse, I put the pieces together and sew the fronts together. Gather the sleeves, add the cuffs, attach the sleeves, and then close the side and sleeves. And later I add a closure and more decorations to the top. The pants are the same as the blouse, patchwork alike, but more purple. I am using two different types of floral fabric and one plain purple. Three pieces for each side of the pants. A lot of fabric. To make sure they are all cut the same, I layer the three pieces and cut the patches. Make sure to make the pants like a little bit bigger than the intended size because once you sew the patches back together, it will take away from the overall size and make the pant pieces a little bit smaller. I didn't know this and I got lucky that I made my, pat my pieces bigger and they actually fit perfectly once I had it all sewn together. And of course, I am always fray checking everything. I do the same patchwork from the front to the back pieces. Once everything is cut, I have to put it back together. Isn't this fun? I also make sure to check the size on the doll so I know that it will fit. And of course, I add more ribbons and laces and decorations to the pant pieces before sewing the pants together. And to put the pants together, it's the same as always. Front pieces at the top center seam and then back and front pieces at the side. I also add a ribbon to the bottom of the pants and sew the inseam and add a waistband and a closure and the pants are done. I also decided to add a jacket. It is less patchy as the other clothing pieces, so I put it together. Shoulder seams, sleeves, side, and sleeves. And I add a collar slash lining thing and some decor as well. Outfit is complete. Before the face up, I fill the eye holes with epoxy clay. Insert eyes are still a struggle. I then spray the face and begin with blushing the face with pinks.
and then later I add blue for the eyeshadow. I then give her lipstick in a light pink. I then add details to her eyes in purple and blue. I want a soft face up and very pastel colors. I then add beauty marks, of course. Her eyebrows are there, but hard to see. I then paint on baby hairs, just cause they're cute and pretty. I'll be using yarn for her hair and the baby hairs will help with the transition and make it look more smooth and it's also just a fun detail to add. Now her eyes took two tries before I got them right. First I tried painting them on, but it wasn't quite right. I then tried again, but with drawing them on, and it also was a little too dark, and I didn't like it. It didn't fit with the rest of the face. So I gave the eyes a break and painted on white lashes. You will see the final eyes later. They are still brown, but a lot lighter. Like I said earlier, I'll be using yarn. To be precise, I'll be using this light blonde yarn. It will be the easiest to style the way I want. So I make wefts and then glue them to the head. These first wefts will not be flipped up. They will act as like down curls and like bigger baby hairs to help with the transition from the head to the hair. Make it look nicer. After that, I add the glued wefts, not to like fill the head, but enough to make it look filled once the hair is flipped up. I then take the brushed out yarn leftovers and glue them to the top of the head to add more height and bulk to the hair. I then style and decorate the hair. I use flowers and bows and half pearls for the decor. And the hair is done! I then style and decorate the hair. I use flowers and bows and half pearls for the decor. And the hair is done! To make the yarn curl, I heat up a metal chopstick and twist the yarn onto the metal chopstick and it curls! Someone asked me on my previous video what I use for the nails. I just use these nail art gems. I just glue them on and then add a layer of gloss. I make her fan by gluing fabric to a paper and then folding it. I also decorate it to make it look nicer.
For her shoes, I take these G3 Frankie shoes and give them the patchwork treatment. And with that, the doll is done! And here is the final doll. She is ready to turn some heads at the next ball. I hope I was able to blend modern with the rococo fashion. I know it doesn't scream modern, but I really love how she turned out. There isn't a part of this doll that I dislike or want to change. She turned out just how I imagined her. I hope I did better on the placement of the irises this time. Can't have all my dolls be cross-eyed. <laughs> of course, she does need a name, so if you guys have any name suggestions, please leave a comment. I know it's tempting to name her Maria Antoinette, but I want something a little more creative, and not so on the nose. Anyway, thank you for joining me today. Follow me on Instagram to see more and to be more part of my process, check out my community page for polls on doll ideas and sneak peeks of upcoming videos. And subscribe to catch future videos. Thank you all for the love and support. Have a creative day. See you soon. Bye!